Everybody, my name is Vivian Martinez, and I would like to introduce you to my C Sharp Bakery. We'll be working with C Sharp today. Um, here, our menu is presented to us. We have four menu options a donut, sheet cakes, funnel cakes, and cupcakes. We also have some sales going on some 12 for $6 donuts and six for $4 cupcakes. Uh, we are asked to select a menu option. I did some error checking, so in the case that you put 7, which is not valid menu option, it is told to us. And then we're asked if we would like to finish our order and pay. I do not want to finish my order because I have not ordered anything, for real. I'm going to say no, mind you, this is case insensitive. I did that on purpose. And then we're asked again, so I'm going to keep it simple. I just want to get some donuts and I'll like to get 12 so I can get the six dollar discount and there you go um, I want to continue ordering I'm gonna decide to order some cupcakes so I like to order two for now you see that it remains um, accurate in the subtotal and then I realized I already have two cupcakes. I might as well get four more and get the four dollar sale. So I'm going to ask for four more. And you see that the sale price has been added onto it um, and it remains accurate. So now I'm actually completed my order. I want to say yes. And we get presented an itemized list. Uh, it tells you the quantity of each item and also our tax. Our tax is 7%, hence the 70 cents. Yeah, uh, the program prompts us to leave a tip. We can leave a 5, 10, or 15% tip. I did program that this that if you have not put 5, 10, or 15, it will automatically be 15 because I did want my C Sharp Bakery to make some money. But in this case, we're going to just go with 5. Here we get a finalized receipt of everything. We have our donuts, 12 donuts, $6, our six cupcakes for $4, our tax, our tip, and our total amount. And a beautiful goodbye message just for our users. So here I'd like to go through a quick, 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 quick code run through. So here we have some of our variables. Um, you can see I have a, a few counter variables right here. Um, my quant variable is for the quantity of this item, the user orders. Um, these two boolean, the valid was my error checking that it was a valid menu option. And our is done was for my do while loop for when the user no longer wants to keep adding on to his order. And then I have a subtotal self-explanatory and then I have a total amount for each of the items I did this just to make my coding a bit easier for me and then I have uh, an integer named option this was for my switch statement for my so I could work through the menu and then I have some temporary string um, they were both for selection so I have select and select two and then cont cont was when the user prompts a y or an n that's where my cont comes in um, I have these temporary values for calculating sale price. Uh, it was necessary because of how kind of tricky the sale price gets. Uh, so now we are greeting our user. So I use a right line to greet the user and I print out my menu. So when we ask for a menu option from above, we're going to use a read line. A read line returns a string. This is my first temporary string. And I needed to convert it into an integer because of option. So that's where I use the 2 int 32 function um, to for the conversion. Here, this if else statement is just for error checking. Uh, I needed to make sure it was a valid option as before the program as for how many so in the case that it is menu option that's valid then we get to asking how many you would like to order again we read the line it returns a string here's my temporary string 2 which was my select 2 
and I convert it into an integer for quant. So we enter our switch statement. For our case one, we are going into our donuts. I'm gonna go into the logic of my donuts just because of the fact that it has a sale price. So it makes it a little bit more tricky in comparison to the ones that don't. So first we start with our counter. Um, we're gonna have the counter variable for donuts plus equal the quant. Um, this is in the case that you might have ordered donuts previously and you wanted to add on to your order So it's going to be an overall counter of all the donuts you've ordered since the beginning of the program Now if the counter is greater than 12, then obviously the sale price needs to be applied We use an if-else statement to calculate the sale price. Um, if the counter is a multiple of 12 um, we divided it by 12 and we get a temporary value that temporary value times 6 for how many times you need to apply that and that's where you get our sale price so in the case that it was 24 24 divided by 12 is 2 2 times 6 because $6 for each 12 then you get $12 so in our else statement, this is in the case that let's say you order 14 donuts. 12 donuts is $6, but the other two donuts have to be at regular price. So um, first we calculate the remainder for our, in our first temporary value using mod 12. And then the second temporary value is just how many times um, the sale is going to be applied. So counter divided by 12 is temp 2. 10 2 times 6 for the sale price and then we just add the remainder which is in the temporary value and that is the total sale price for donuts um just like i mentioned before i have these total values for each of them so the sale price of the donuts equals the total in the else statement um this is in the case that the counter is less than 12 and a sale price has not been touched and won't be touched um we just add, we do a plus equal the quantity because the quantity is just one dollar, so you don't have to times it by one. It's uh, right there. Um, for sheet cakes uh, and funnel cakes, the uh, logic is the same for both. Um, we have the counter plus equal the quantity, and then we have the total of how many funnel cake, the total price of funnel cakes, plus um, the quantity times the price, which for funnel cakes is. $3.50 and for sheet cakes it's $8. Um, our cupcakes have the same logic as the donuts just it is 6 for $4 instead of the 12 for 6 clearly. And then here we go so we're going to add up all the totals to get our actual subtotal and we're going to print it out and I print it out using this two string function with F in parentheses so doing that we pretty much always are going to have a decimal place and we're gonna have two decimal places after that so this was very crucial for presenting money a monetary value like you're not gonna have one dollar it's just gonna say one it's gonna say one dot zero zero for the cents um, so that's why I use this two string and it's going to be repeatedly placed um, within the program, within the coding. Um, next I ask the user to order and pay. Um, we read the line, it's going to be a string and I also use a two upper function in order to make its case insensitive. If yes, we're going to exit out. So here we go, we have exit out of our do while loop. Here we have calculated the 7% and we're going to round it. We use the round function of the math library and in that you just pretty much put the variable that you're going to round and then you, how many places, I'm going to round it to two places. Um, then I'm going to print my itemized list. Once again, you're going to see the two string being used and if the counter is greater than zero, so if in the case I did not order something, I'm not going to print it out. So that's how that works. Um, so here we're going to update our subtotal um, plus equal to tax because you can't calculate a tip without 
having a whole subtitle. Now we're going to calculate our tip. The tip is a string, and then I also have a double for when I calculate it. Um, when we ask the user for a 5, 10, or 15%, they're going to read the line, it's going to return a string, which is for tip. And if it's 5, we calculate for 5%, so forth. I did mention before that if you did not, if the user does not put 5, 10, or 15, it's automatically going to be a 15% tip. So that's where that comes in. Now we're going to round the tip. So, rounding, we use our the round function of the math library, we're rounding it to two places, very similar to when we calculated the text. We're going to update the subtotal once again, and then here we're just printing the finalized receipt, um, just like the itemized list, if you did not order something, it's not going to print. Um, we're also seeing the two string being used again because I wanted to present money how it's supposed to be and I do that with all of the variables all of the totals as well as the tax the tip and the subtotal and I end the program with a beautiful goodbye um, I hope that you enjoyed watching this thank you